Okay, so our next topic is pulmonary tuberculosis. And we're going to start off with the symptoms of active disease when a patient comes in with pulmonary tuberculosis. The symptoms of active disease include a patient that comes in with a cough, hemoptysis, fever, night sweats, weight loss, a pleuritic type of chest pain, as well as malaise. If a patient comes in with these symptoms, what's our best initial test? We're going to start off with a chest x-ray. Remember, our best initial is not sputum and culture like many of you guys think. It's chest x-ray. And in order to go to sputum and culture, the patient has to be compatible with TB on this chest x-ray. By compatible with TB, what do I mean? You're going to do a chest x-ray as your best initial test, and you're going to see something such as hyaluronic lymphadenopathy, which you guys also know, know as gone complex. You're going to see cavitary lesions. You're going to see um, an opacity that looks like an infiltrate, an effusion, a granuloma, something that's going to show me TB is going to be seen on this x-ray, and that's when you're going to actually confirm with sputum and culture. But if they ask you what is your gold standard for diagnosis of TB, it's going to be sputum and culture. But remember, best initial, chest x-ray, and only if it's compatible are we going to sputum and culture. If our sputum and culture is positive, we're going to start the patient on a four-drug regimen, and it's going to be given for six months, okay? And our four-drug regimen is INH, rifampin, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol, which is going to be given initially for eight weeks. And we're going to follow this by INH and rifampin for an additional 16 weeks. And what do we have to supplement the patient um, when you give them INH? What do you have to supplement with? You have to supplement with B6, because what's the side effect of INH, as we all know? Peripheral neuropathy. And our B6 is going to pre prevent the peripheral neuropathy. Now, I said we're going to give these four drugs for eight weeks and then INH and rifampin for additional 16 weeks. But when does this right here, the second part, change? If a patient is co-infected with TB and HIV both. If a patient is co-infected with TB and HIV, I want you to do rifabutin instead of rifampin. So if a patient has HIV and TB, you're going to give INH and rifabutin for 16 weeks after the initial four drugs you get for eight weeks. Sputum microscopy for AFB, it's a good surrogate marker for infectivity. And no patients with three negative smears are considered non-infectious. Now, we give these drugs, but a, important questions on the test are side effects of medication. So we're gonna go over them real quick. Rifampin can cause orange colored secretions, very high yield, and I think everyone who's listening to this knows that. Pyrazinamide causes hyperuricemia. INH is going to cause peripheral neuropathy, and we're going to supplement that with B6. And ethambutol is an important question because they may ask, what do you have to do before initiating um, anti-TB medication? We have to do a baseline visual exam as well as a baseline eye exam because ethambutol causes optic neuritis. I said that we're going to give this four-drug regimen for six months. These initial four for eight weeks, and INH and rifampin for an additional 16 weeks. And INH and rifabutin if they're both TB and HIV positive together. But what's the only time in medicine where we're going to extend our therapy past six months? We're going to go past six months if the patient has any of the following conditions. If they have osteomyelitis, if they have meningitis, if they're pregnant, or if they have miliary TB. That's when we're going to extend past six months. Next, I want to go over patients that have been exposed to TB and patients from high-risk groups that are asymptomatic. These patients are first going to get a PPD. If our PPD is positive, we're going to go to our chest x-ray. And our PPD positivity depends on what we're talking about. A positive PPD, you only need 5 millimeters if the patient has been in close contact with TB, if they're a steroid user, if they're HIV positive or if they're organ transplant recipients, anything over five millimeters is considered a positive test and we're gonna to go to our chest x-ray. 10 millimeters is considered a positive test in high risk groups. By high risk groups, what do I mean? Homeless, immigrants, alcoholics, healthcare workers, prisoners or prison workers, IV drug abusers, silicosis patients, gastrectomy, malignancy, and children under the four, under four years of age, if they have 10 millimeters, they are considered positive PPD, and we're going to go to chest x-ray. And 15 mm is 
those with no increased risk. The average Joe Schmo, if they're if they're 15 mm or more, you're going to go to chest X-ray. And remember, if the PPD is negative, we want to repeat that PPD in three months. Now I said exposed groups and high risk groups that are asymptomatic, we're going to do a PPD. If our PPD is positive, we're going to go to chest X-ray. If our chest X-ray is positive and the patient shows signs of infection, that's when I want you to go to sputum acid fasting and culture to confirm this chest X-ray, which is very similar to what we did over here as our best initial, which is chest X-ray, except that in exposed groups and high-risk groups that are asymptomatic, we're going PPD first, then chest X-ray, then to sputum. Here, with a patient that comes in with symptoms, we're going chest X-ray, then straight to sputum. So if the PPD is positive and um, the chest x-ray is positive and they have signs of infection and you've done a sputum acid fast stain and they're positive, that's when you're going to initiate your anti-tuberculosis medications and you must notify public health authorities. For tuberculosis, this is mandatory. And if for patients um, in which diagnosis of TB has not been established from the sputum culture, but the doctor has still has a high index of suspicion, you can do something called a fiber optic bronchoscopy. So real quick, exposed groups and high-risk groups that are asymptomatic, what are you going to do? You're going to do a PPD. If the PPD is positive based on these characteristics, we're going to go to a chest x-ray. If the chest x-ray is positive, we're going to go to a sputum acid fasting and if it's positive, we're going to initiate to anti-tuberculosis treatment and notify public authorities. And if the PPD is negative, we're going to repeat that PPD in three months. And if the culture, uh, uh, the sputum culture, acid fasting, still comes out negative, but you still have a high index of suspicion, we can go to fiber optic bronchoscopy.